Hi, welcome to AB 474, Indoor Environmental Control. In this session, we're going to talk about some uh, introductory terminology to um, the topic of the course, which is indoor environmental control. And um, throughout the course, all of these segments of lecture are going to um, be based on, or at least structured around, the chapters within our course text, uh, which is this heating, ventilation, Air conditioning book, sixth edition, uh, with the authors McQuiston, Parker, and Spittler. Um, I won't be covering everything from every chapter, but uh, we'll spend some time uh, highlighting some of the main points in each chapter. And we are going to be in chapter one today, uh, again, just reviewing some basic introductory terminology for indoor environmental control. Um, so to start, uh, let's think about the the term air conditioning and what we mean when we're talking about air conditioning. When you hear the phrase air conditioning, it's referring to uh, the control of different properties of the air inside our environment. So we could be controlling temperature. Control, we could be controlling moisture content. We could be looking at the cleanliness of the air, so wanting to control the cleanliness of the air. Other aspects of air quality, such as gases within the air. We could also be looking at um, uh, air movement or air circulation, so not necessarily the uh, state of the air but how the air is moved could also be a part of air conditioning. So um, those are the main things we're looking at when we're talking about air conditioning and the idea is that uh, we're controlling or conditioning changing parameters of the air. So the main processes that we're going to talk about are heating, cooling, various approaches for humidity control. So heating and cooling are for changing the temperature, uh, but, but also can serve functions within humidity control, uh, changing the moisture, and strategies for ventilation. A number of other um, uh, approaches we could look at, but these are the main ones we're going to look at uh, within this class. Okay. Um, in your foundation uh, within engineering already, you uh, should be uh, well aware that units are something we have to pay attention to uh, when we're working within engineering systems because we're working within two systems of units. So the international system as well as the English system or the inch pound. So IP stands for inch pound system. Um, both of these uh, may show up within different uh, aspects of our um, design and analysis. Um, when we're talking about applications of design, the English system is going to be uh, found very commonly uh, in the U.S. for equipment and components of our systems. So we need to be able to work between both of the unit systems. I want to spend a couple of minutes just um, highlighting a few of the common units that we might see within HVAC systems and within air conditioning systems and their abbreviations. So GPM stands for gallon per minute, CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. Typically we might be talking about um, uh, amounts of water or amounts of liquid moving, uh, and here we might be talking about the amount of air that's moving. INWG, which might also be shown as this uh, symbol WG, and that both of those stand for inches of water inches of water column, inches of water gauge. And then ton. And this is not a measure of mass or weight. Um, in 
the uh, application of environmental control, this is a measure of the amount of energy. And frequently we see this paired with a time, so a ton hour. There are a lot of other units we're going to come across. We're just highlighting a few of them again. These are introductory things you may not have seen before, so we want to make sure that you've seen them uh, at least once before we run into them and talk about them and apply them. All right, so let's just review. Um, energy is um, represented as a rate times a time. Power is a rate, so it's important to recall the difference between these two, um, especially when we're thinking about components. So <clears throat> we are going to be uh, cognizant in our analysis and in our design that components of HVAC systems, HVAC systems, um, are going to consume energy. So we're going to talk a lot about energy in this class. Um, and we have a lot of components within our system that consume energy. So we have fans. In many cases, we might have compressors, a compressor or multiples, um, potentially a boiler, um, furnace, potentially might have um, a pump or more than one pump. Uh, and all of those are going to be um, reliant on some type of fuel. So the common types of fuel that we see uh, in HVA systems um, actually have quite a bit of variability. So it could be natural gas, propane, fuel oil, um, or electricity, and there are many systems out there that use alternative fuels as well. But these are going to be the common ones that we're going to run across in the designs we're interested in. So as we're discussing this, um, what I really want to get to is the idea that efficiency is important. Um, so when we're thinking about efficiency being important, there are a number of uh, places where we need to think about the efficiency of our system. So um, one we should be thinking about properly sized equipment so that we're operating in um, ideal areas of our efficiency curve for our equipment. and not only the size of the equipment, but the operation of the equipment. So properly operated equipment. This has to do with both being designed <coughs> and also um, the ability of the operator to understand how it is supposed to work uh, so that they can operate it properly. Um, and then there are a lot of other things that, that are dependent. So the type of energy, type of fuel that, it's, um, that has been selected for it. The type of fuel is one option. Um, the quality of the equipment. And we could kind of make a list of things that could affect the efficiency of our system. Um, the last thing I want to cover in terms of uh, terminology and just sort of introductory introducing the terms that we are going to be seeing this semester um, have to do with some of these fundamental concepts, the fundamental processes that I um, mentioned with respect to heating, cooling, controlling humidity, ventilation. Um, so let's spend a few minutes um, thinking about some of these fundamental concepts and just kind of defining what we mean whenever, what, the, what do we mean when we say heating, for example?
So at its most basic, heating should result in uh, an increase in temperature. So we might uh, apply heating with the intent that we're raising the temperature of the air. We also might apply heating um, just to maintain desired temperature. So for example, if we are uh, in a cold setting and we just want to maintain temperature, we may need to um, apply some heating just to hold at a steady temperature. And really, um, at its fundamental level, what heating is, is adding energy to our air. And we're going to be adding it by sensible heat transfer. And we'll certainly talk a lot more about sensible heat transfer as the semester goes. Um, but it's important to know sensible heat transfer has to do with adding energy to our air. Now the opposite of heating is cooling. And you might be able to deduce that uh, when we employ cooling, we would like to be reducing the temperature. Or sort of the parallel to maintaining temperature uh, during cold by using heating is to maintain temperature um, when there is uh, heat that's entering or heat that is uh, we're trying to counter. So maintain temperature. So there's a number of scenarios that could happen uh, where we would be wanting to maintain temperature when there's a heat supply. So that could be uh, heat that is uh, entering our control space from the environment, such as outdoor. So outdoor air that we're bringing in, or it could be from uh, energy gained from solar. This uh, heat supplied could also come from the occupants. So we're metabolizing inside the space and generating heat. And it could also come from other fixtures inside, such as equipment. For example, if we have a computer room, there's typically a, a substantial heat supply into that space that we may need to counter. Um, next concept I want to review or introduce is dehumidification. So humidity is um, a way to describe moisture that's inside the air. Um, so dehumidification is the removal of moisture from the air. And the moisture could come from uh, could come from occupants, or it could uh, be moisture that is already in the air that we're bringing in. Humidification is essentially the inverse of that, so. Uh, where we're adding moisture. To the air in our control space. And in this class, we're not going to talk a lot about how to clean the air. Um, but we, as we go through our analysis, we will identify scenarios where we would need to clean the air, uh, a number of scenarios, and we will um, uh, just need to be aware or, or um, capable of thinking about um, what kind of cleaning we might want to apply to our system. So um, this is one of the areas where we see um, different approaches for human and non-human. So in human scenarios, we typically see 
um, filtration. So some sort of a uh, filters within the HVAC system. Um, and we see a lot of variability in air cleaning for um, non-human and even for human industrial applications. So in our non-human, the animal housing is typically where we're most interested because animals are contributing to the environment, um, dust and gases uh, that sometimes we want to control. Um, and in animal housing, we're typically seeing things applied um, at the exhaust side. So typically cleaning is not necessarily occurring for the benefit of the occupants, but more for the reduction of emissions to the outdoor environment. So typically we're seeing the cleaning on the exhaust and uh, some ways that could be done are with things like uh, water curtains and biofilters. And again, there are a, quite a, there's quite a wide variety of technologies out there being applied. There isn't really a, an industry standard that is everybody's go-to for this. Um, so we might see a frame housing and then, you know, uh, some other options where we see variability, uh, industrial applications. And we could continue to make a list of, of scenarios where that's the case. Um, so this is going to wrap up our kind of introductory terminology. Um, we've talked a little bit about um, air conditioning and what we mean by the term air conditioning. We've highlighted the need to understand both sets of units, so both the international system and the English system, and work uh, between them and cross between them, even within some of the same, uh, same problems. Uh, we talked a little bit about efficiency, uh, the difference between energy and power, um, that our components within our systems are um, consuming energy that we need to be aware of when we think about the processes that we're going to apply in order to condition the air. And then we uh, ended by sort of introducing some of the fundamental concepts for the processes that we might use to condition the air. So heating, cooling, dehumidification, humidification, and air cleaning. Um, I would encourage you to um, use this as a supplement to uh, the information in chapter one. and. Um, we will continue the next installment with Chapter 2, looking at an overview of HVA systems, HVAC systems.